The following program is an opinion program. The opinions expressed by the hosts and guests of this program are not the opinions of the management, staff, and advertisers of this station. Please direct all criticism, concern, and adulation to the hosts of this program. Welcome to Alabama Politics of This Week. I am Dale Jackson. I'm a radio talk show host. You can hear my shows Monday through Friday from 5 to 9 a.m. on WVNN in Huntsville and from 10 until noon uh, down in Birmingham on Talk 99.5. With me, as always, Mecca Music, the CEO of 256 Day, smart news for smart people. Uh, Mecca, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we have, let's see, Yaffe with us, and I have a party shot about that situation going on in Tuscaloosa. Uh, with uh, Brandon Miller. So stay tuned. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. But for right now, let's go ahead and get to the two minute warning. <laughs> All right, let's talk a, a little bit about the two former presidents. Whoops, one is still president. Excuse me. Uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. They both had uh, pretty eventful weeks this week. One of them uh, went over to the Ukraine to flex his foreign policy muscles by saying, hey, uh, here's a blank check. And Putin said, oh, nice to see you over there. Uh, we're going to pull out of the START Treaty. And China said, uh, we got Russia. So uh, what's up? They're going to claim this is a giant success. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, for some reason, he ran off to Palestine, o Ohio. Uh, and he said, uh, I'm here uh, because the administration is not. And then Mayor Pete showed up the next day. Uh, very contentious stuff here. Who, ha who had a better week? Let's say this is the 2024 battle. You have uh, Biden with the Ukrainian flag pin, Trump with the American flag pin, that kind of thing. I, I don't necessarily know who w better as far as that. But remember when we were talking about Trump's game plan, what is he doing? You know, attacking DeSantis and things like that. I think he's much more effective getting coverage this way. Yeah. I think as far as for Trump, this was a very good move. Yeah, but he didn't call anybody meatball rod. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that, what a, a huge mistake. Uh, by him. Look, I, I think that this is, like I said, the 2024 uh, election in a nutshell. The Biden administration has done what they've done with every single thing that's happened. They've tried to wait it out. Like, you just hope that it, like, handles itself. Or maybe behind the scenes they're doing it. But out front, they don't want to be in that situation. But for Ukraine, he wants to go stand on the main stage. He wants to go into a, a war zone. He wants credit for going over there and looking strong. And like, and it does. It looks strong. I mean, these, uh, you know, Zelensky, he's been, you know, really praised for his stance and he's out there. He's in the trenches and stuff. So, of course, Biden wants to go in and get a little bit of the shine. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It, there, the media frames it as sort of like he's JFK saying, tear down this wall, or he's, uh, J or excuse me, Reagan saying, tear down this wall. He's JFK saying, I'm a donut in Berlin. This is, that's what he actually said, by the way. But the simple fact here is he doesn't come off that way because the reaction from foreign leaders, North Korea shooting off, shooting off nukes or uh, uh, missiles. You got Russia trying to but shoot one But as far as appearances and coverage, I would say this is a win for both of them. I don't know. I don't really see it that way, but I, I could see I, I, the coverage. Yes, I'll agree with that. Thank you. It, it'll be interesting to see. There were some polls out at the end of the week. Actually showed Trump up on both Harris and Biden, which is which is interesting. He should go to more disasters. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Pete Buttigieg will make some more of them. I don't know. All right, uh, let's let's move on and, and talk about this uh, dishonorable thing happening in, in California. I, I wanted to focus on this because education has been such a big issue, not only for this show, but for the country right now. And this isn't about whether we're going to teach CRT or, or gender studies or any of that stuff. This is just about honors classes. And it's so amazing here uh, that they said, hey, let's go ahead and remove these honors classes in the name of equity. And I looked at the numbers of this place that they did this, Culver City, uh, California, and as California goes, the rest of the nation eventually follows is, is sort of how this works. The kids in those classes, African-American, 15% of the student body, 14% of the classes. Uh, Hispanic, 37% of the student body, 12% of the classes. There's a bigger gulf there, but it's because a lot of those kids are English as a second language. Right. It's not like this crazy oh, off-skew numbers here that you're seeing, and they're doing this in the name of equity just because... I, it seemed like they were just like, we've got to do something. Not not necessarily a good thing, just something. This is the absolute worst, worst way. And it's not just this incident in Culver City that you're talking about. Yeah. There's other things where, oh, this might make some students feel bad, not everything. You know, stop that. Everybody just needs to stop Can't that. Can't give them scholarships because it might... Uh, yeah. I mean, in, in Virginia, there were multiple school districts where they just didn't give their kids a break. Right. Future, future scholarship. I mean, just literally screwed them. 
I mean, the, it's an, it's insane. So this is the exact backwards way to go about correcting an imbalance, though. And I'm going to bring up your favorite school system, Huntsville City Schools. They are a shining example of ways to address this imbalance. So what they do is they have they if, if there's an imbalance, if someone expresses an interest, they will catch them up. They will give them extra support, sure. extra tutoring, so they can be part of these AP classes and succeed in them. So help people catch up. If by helping a gap, them actually they would catch like up, as opposed to making other people right. slow down. Oh, what yes. an idea! And, and that's that makes complete sense. And Absolutely, that's exactly Absolutely. what they should be doing. If they want to be in the class, they should try to help them get in there. And I don't see any problem with that. This idea that we're going to slow everyone else down in the guys of equity doesn't make any sense. And you said, as California goes, the rest of the country goes. I don't think that is going to fly nationwide. Let's check back in in a few years oh, and see and see where we're going. All right. Uh, let's talk about gambling. You would think this is the first year of the quadrennium. We've got new elected officials coming in. Some smart people on television shows might tell you if they're going to get it done, this is the time they're going to do it. Yes, Mecca might tell you that. <laughs> but they're now telling you the elected officials are saying, don't bet on it. Don't. Because there's a lot of people there that they don't really think are uh, pro-gambling Folks, uh, I was speaking today to a state senator, and he told me, look, we lost four yeses uh, on the floor. Right. And two, the, at least two of them, he said, he knows are no's. So that moves it in the wrong direction. And it cracks me up because, like, you hear this, oh, we don't know if we have the numbers. It's like, God, the Alabama legislature makes himself look so inept. <laughs> like, oh, we ran out of time. We just, we can't read calendars anymore. And now they're like, oh, we can't count the votes. It's like, it just, it's so strange to make them look inept. But on hold, it Led better. Yeah, uh, right. The, Apparently, the, the Speaker of the there House. will not be a gambling push in the legislative session this year. Not what, led by him. That's well, what he said. Yeah. There you go. Um, what was really, really uh, telling to me was they were pointing out there's just such a new crop of members. Um, they, the, you know, they're just not familiar with the situation, which really means they need time to be educated and uh, on the issue by certain interests. Uh, so a couple of maybe go into some dark rooms and yeah, light some like cigars. They, they haven't had a chance to get everybody in the dark room yet. Well, know. what I find interesting about that is I want to be in that dark room. That's the first <laughs> thing. Secondly, the other thing I find interesting about that is how do we not know where these people stand? Like, did this not come up? Did nobody ask them during the election? Like, gambling is is one of the top, like, ten things in the state easily that people talk about. I'm not saying it's the top ten most important things. Right. But, I mean, we're talking about it. Obviously. And, and, and I'm just saying, it just seems to be something that you might have an idea where the person well, stands. and again, this is another year that lottery money is just bleeding across our borders. Yeah, that's true. Um, and... Uh, a straight lottery, I think, could pass. It of course still it can't would. pass the legislature. That, and that's basically the takeaway here. Mm -hmm. It could pass by voters. The money could go to, like I said, ISIS. It could go anywhere you want it to go. I hate that it argument. could. That's not it, true. Mecca, if you put on the ballot, it says we will have lottery, but money will go to ISIS. People are like, yep, all right, yeah, uh, 100%. Not. I'm fine with that. All right, uh, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, another dishonorable thing here. Uh, the mayor of Montgomery, Stephen Reed, uh, following in his father's footsteps of saying, I can do whatever I want and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, you caught me? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. And there's nothing you can do to me. If you haven't been following this story, uh, he was caught on tape. It was recorded a couple years ago where he basically slandered everybody in the entire city, uh, whether they were military members at Max uh, Maxwell, which is uh, near the city, uh, whether we are talking about black voters, white voters, the business community, uh, everyone. Everyone got it. Everyone got it. And, and he basically said, I will be reelected. I don't have to do no GD work. And, and it just went on from there. And he said all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And he was right. I mean, and that's, the thing that, <laughs> that's the thing that's like the most, the, the, the killer thing is he laid it out so well. People will want him to come on television. He is, yeah. he is the young black male mayor of a blue city in a red state. So every time Alabama says abortion, they go, oh, put that guy on TV and, and, and let, him, let him have a conversation. And he says every time that happens, somebody in New York or L.A. calls him and goes, hey, I'd like to do some business with you guys. Yeah. Which, uh, again, following his dad's footsteps, okay. And, they, and, but then he said, and that's the people he needs because, you know, the... Those are the they, people I need. So what I need to do is get on cable news every now and then, have people yeah. pay attention to me, and, and I can just bring some stuff here and everything will be fine because he didn't say these words. All the people really care about is green. And that, that's all they care about. And it, it doesn't matter. Um, 
he'll get their votes. Listen, I'm not saying it's the best look. It, it's not a good look for him to be saying these things. But I assume what you're going to say is not only has he been an effective mayor, he's also correct. I, mean, I, I will be curious to see how the re-election chances and numbers come about. But you're right. He could very well be correct. And some people might be applauding him for saying some things. I, 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 I think there are people applauding him. I mean, look, I watch as politicians do the dumbest things and go on social media and they will just defend them. No matter. There will be people out of nowhere that defend them. It makes no sense. I, I can't imagine going on somewhere and defending somebody for saying these kind of things. Like At minimum, say, this is a terrible thing to say, but he's a good leader. Fine. I'm agree with that. But saying it's great and all this other stuff, I don't know. But there are people that will do that. Uh, Mecca, hold on. We got Yaffe joining us here in just a second. We'll talk with him about some of these things and some other stuff. You got Alabama politics this week. We'll be right back. You work hard to earn little escapes because doing your best means being your best. So let us help you discover your best at Premier Dental Spa. With our unique blend of cosmetic, dental, and spa-like aesthetic services, you'll leave feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. Make sure the best you is here to stay and book your appointment online today at PremierDentalSpa.com. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here for my friends at University Kia. Now look, I love Kias. I've driven plenty of them. I used to have a Kia Sportage. When my son was born, my wife said, no, no, we got to get ourselves one of these big SUVs. The Telluride from University Kia is an absolutely amazing vehicle. You get it at a great price, but you get everything at University Kia at a great price. Learn more about it today. Head on over to universitykia.com. Find the perfect vehicle for you. New and pre-owned. They got it for you. Universitykia.com. Want fun, safe, intelligent fitness programming? Want to build muscular strength, cardiovascular endurance, drastically improve range of motion and mobility, and learn proper nutrition to fuel your life with energy and emotional health? Well, come find out why Iron Tribe Fitness is ranked one of the top five fitness programs in America. Come find out why personal training and intentionally working on your current movement patterns individually is not only important, it's just another core value that separates Iron Tribe Fitness from other fitness facilities. To learn how to get your two week free pass, go to irontribefitness.com. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here, and this is my son, Grant. Now, I'm here to talk to you about Top Shelf Customized Cleaning. He's a handful, I'm a handful, and if I want to stay married, I need Top Shelf Customized Cleaning to come and take care of my house. They do an amazing job for me, and they'll do an amazing job for you. Cindy loves them, I love them, Grant loves them as well. Check them out on Facebook, Top Shelf Customized Cleaning. And don't forget, call them today, 256-417-9122. And when you talk to them, make sure you tell them Grant sent you. Nearly 170,000 Alabama drivers have their licenses suspended because they missed payments on traffic tickets. These are moms who can't get their kids from school and dads who can't get to work. Folks just trying to care for their families. Support the bipartisan driver's license bill and get these folks back on the road. Workers drive Alabama. When we're free to drive, we're free to work. Do you have a car sitting around you want to get rid of? Well, here's a great idea. Donate your car now to help local veterans in your area. Yes, just make one fast call to the Veteran Car Donation Program. Within a few days, we'll come and remove your car for free. You can donate any car in any condition. We'll use our vast network to sell it. The proceeds raised go to help local veterans and their families. And you get a tax deduction. And all you need to do is make this free call. Clean your yard up, get rid of an old car, and help the vets. We make it easy. Make this free call now. Book your fast and easy pickup. Call the Veteran Car Donation Program now. Well, welcome back to Alabama Politics This Week. I am Dale Jackson with me, as always, uh, Mecca Music. We appreciate her being here. And with us, as always, uh, well, not always, sometimes, Yaffe uh, from WVNN. You can hear her show 9 to 11 
uh, right there on WVNN in Huntsville. Congratulations to Yaffe, however, are in order. Uh, he is Alabama's most uh, popular fill-in talk show host, so he goes out <laughs> and, and fills in for people all over the state. Uh, he's been really busy. And does busy. a great job. And, and does an okay does. job. So <laughs> you, you probably hear him elsewhere uh, on all these radio stations you hear this show. Let's talk to Yaffe about some of the stuff going on uh, in the state of Alabama. This is one of the things that me and Yaffe have talked about a lot, gambling. We always thought, oh, the first year of the, of the quadrennium, maybe they'll have a conversation about gambling. Well, it looks like they're lowering those mm -hmm. expectations significantly, Yaffe. Do you, do you think gambling's really dead already? Uh, I think it's possible. Anything's possible when it comes to gambling. I feel like I'm still going to be hosting in 50 years in Alabama, and I'll still be talking about how we haven't fixed anything with this. We'll still be talking about this issue in like 50 years. But Yeffy, were you surprised to hear that, to hear those reports uh, from the upcoming legislative session that, you know, no, we don't, we don't think gambling is going to happen this year. Were you surprised by that? Not really. I mean, maybe a little because they usually want to talk about it, but I think a lot of them are probably sick of talking about it because they know they can't get anything done. Yeah, they haven't had to deal with it, and now they thought they were going to have to deal with it. And, no, nope, uh, kill it before it even gets started. I'm very surprised. I, I thought, I truly believed what was going on with, like, Victory Land, where they're like, okay, now we got to go to fake horse races or something in order to scam people out of money. I thought that would be a perfect opportunity for the legislature to move forward, but apparently not. Apparently not. Uh, moving on, uh, yeah, I mean, we've also watched over the last week or so is this conversation about rebates, tax reform, uh, and all these other things in the uh, Alabama legislature has kind of, I would say changed. Uh, it, before it was everyone's getting a check, everyone's getting a check. Now you're seeing Clay Schofield say, whoa, hold on. And, and he's the majority leader in the Senate. And, and he says, hold on, maybe we should just put this money into a savings account. You're hearing others say, no, 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 we need to give money back to the people. You hear all this stuff. Has that conversation died down as well? Or are they still arguing over what it's going to look like? I think they're arguing what it's going to look like in terms of, yeah, they might not do a tax rebate at all, or they're going to do some time of some type of one-time check. Seriously doubt it's going to be any kind of permanent tax cut. But the, the thing that makes me believe it's still probably alive, the conversation, is because KIV came out earlier supporting a rebate. And it, it's hard for me to believe that if she supports it, that everyone else is just going to back down. She's going to want to push it forward. So you think a rebate could be possible still, but maybe it might be we're going to put some in the rebate, we're going to put some in the savings account. Do you think something like that is possible going forward? Yeah, they could come to some grand compromise, which I would be kind of annoyed at because that would mean less money in the tax rebate, which I, I tend to agree. If they have all this extra money, it should go back to the people. I just don't understand why the food tax is not the top issue here. That makes everybody happy. You got the Alabama Policy Institute mm -hmm. in there. You got Alabama Horizon, one left wing, one right wing, both talk about the same thing. I just don't understand how they cannot wean themselves off this food tax in, in that issue. But that doesn't seem to be gaining any steam at all. Yeah, well, that's because they always make this argument that we're already really low taxed or whatever. I think it's because we have low property taxes. And they just, you know, it's money they don't want to give up. And that, that would be a permanent thing. It's, it's different when it's a one-time thing. But now it's like, oh, I might have to actually give up some money permanently. I don't want to do that. that that's what drives most of that. I've pitched this for years, Yaffe. What do you think about this idea? It's like four cents, I think the state is. Over 40 years, take down 0.1%, 0 .1%, or not 0.1%, but take down uh, one penny or whatever it is. One-tenth of a penny. There, that's what I'm looking for. One-tenth well, of a penny no doubt over 40 if years. Did, if they did it, they'll have to do it gradually. I, I don't think it would be all at once. Yeah, it just seems like a, a pretty simple issue. All right, uh, down to Montgomery, Mayor Reed caught on tape saying some pretty... Uh, uncouth things, uh, and people seem to like it. May, at least that's what a lot of people say on social media, uh, that uh, it's fine, he, he can say these things, he's still doing a good job. I mean, is that it? Uh, I mean, is this is this a Trump byproduct where you can just say whatever you want, and, and as long as you're doing well, you'll be okay? Depends on where you are and what your constituency is. From what I understand, he has, you know, he wins by a lot, he doesn't really have any challengers, and People like him there, so they're going to be willing to defend him. And I think people, I think Trump did kind of reveal that there are a lot of people that want to fight her. So as long as he kind of comes out as a fighter fighting against it, it, it could be well for him. 
But we'll see. We'll have to find out for sure in the next election. I mean, that's really where we, we, we see what the, what the result of all this is. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what we had said earlier. Um, like, let's see what the election. The voters don't. We'll, we'll see. But it seems like they're, he might just be fine from it. What about the ramifications, though, from the different groups and people, uh, the business interests and things like that he talked about in these comments? What does he do with that? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I honestly, because when, if the people are not going to hold him accountable for saying these things, then he might feel even more empowered and try to do things that maybe might, might not be the right thing to do. I mean, it, it's sad to say, but it's really, it's really up to the constituency. You get what you vote for. I mean, he, he basically made it clear that I can do whatever I want as long as I'm delivering. Oh, he said I mean, that loud and clear that's, that's, numerous that's, times that's, in many different variations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and with many different curse words. I mean, it's just, <laughs> there's no question there. He, he just is. can do all of those things. And I, and I think that it is probably uh, true. Is he really he, delivering, though? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, I, what? I mean, yeah, he is. <laughs> He's bringing, Montgomery is not having the same resurgence uh, that you're seeing in, in places like Huntsville and Mobile and mm. things like this. Uh, but there are businesses coming to the area and things like that, and, and yeah. it's definitely, they're doing okay, and I think that that's a part of it. And, you know, there's a demographic advantage that he has there that he even speaks of, and I don't think his problem is going to be African-American voters. That's not, that's not going to be his problem. His problem is going to be the business community. If the business community mm -hmm. says, this is going to harm us, right. then they'll that's find someone asking. else and try to, to run them against mm -hmm. them. But I, I, right. I just, if not, they'll play ball with him. I mean, their job is to play ball and get the jobs done and get uh, the keep the economy going in the right direction there all right uh, let's talk uh, move a little national real quick uh, you have uh, two different presidents uh, making news this week uh, we have one in ukraine one in the united states uh, biden and trump who had the better week i i think i mean we're so divided it's always hard to say some of this stuff but i have to go with trump the image of trump being in in palestine while Joe Biden in Ukraine, so many people are going to be like, wow, Trump puts America first. That's a powerful message. There are people on both sides that feel like we're too involved with stuff overseas. And Trump it definitely used that to his advantage this weekend well when he's campaigning. And Yeffy, I brought this up earlier. We had kind of maybe questioned Trump's campaign and where it's going. And he's just going to attack DeSantis. How effective do you think this, this sort of move is for him? It's extremely effective. I mean, I call it brilliant, but it really is kind of common sense to do something like this. But in terms of political PR, it's brilliant timing, and it looks good because it goes back to why people wanted him in the first place. He's an outsider. He gets the average American. He's all about America first. That's how he won, and that's how he can win again. Yeah, if, he, if Donald Trump took you to McDonald's like he did those people in Palestine, <laughs> Big uh, Ohio, would you do to him what you normally do to me when I take you to McDonald's, order food for your wife, and say, oh, you're going to eat this stuff later and make me pay for it? <laughs> uh, yes, and I would make sure not to get a McRib because those are gross. Okay, okay and then I'm <laughs> taking a shot at the America's best delicacy. But all right, uh, there we go. Yavi, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, having a baby or something, too. Congratulations <laughs> uh, on that uh, for Yavi. Uh, congratulations there. His wife is way better than he is. That's why I point that out. Uh, Steffi's one of my favorite people on the planet. Yavi, he's way down there. Yavi, I think you're great. Okay, there we go. doesn't matter. Mecca's leaving. Uh, the show's going to get a lot better. I promise you that. Stay tuned for the parking shot. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here for my friends at University Kia. Now look, I love Kias. I've driven plenty of them. I used to have a Kia Sportage. When my son was born, my wife said, no, no, we got to get ourselves one of these big SUVs. The Telluride from University Kia is an absolutely amazing vehicle. You get it at a great price, but you get everything at University Kia at a great price. Learn more about them today. Head on over to universitykia.com. Find the perfect vehicle for you. New and pre-owned. They got it for you. Universitykia.com. You work hard to earn little escapes because doing your best means being your best. So let us help you discover your best at Premier Dental Spa. With our unique blend of cosmetic dental and spa-like aesthetic services, you'll leave feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. Make sure the best you is here to stay and book your appointment online today at PremierDentalSpa.com. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here and this is my son Grant. Now, I'm here to talk to you about Top Shelf Customized Cleaning. He's a handful, I'm a handful, and if I want to stay married, 
I need top shelf customized cleaning to come and take care of my house. They do an amazing job for me and they'll do an amazing job for you. Cindy loves them. I love them. Grant loves them as well. Check them out on Facebook. Top shelf customized cleaning. And don't forget, call them today. 256-417-9122. And when you talk to them, make sure you tell them Grant sent you. I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for dental visits. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for transportation to my doctor. Did you? I didn't know some Medicare Advantage plans may pay to have my prescriptions delivered directly to my home. Did you? These and more are important benefits some Medicare Advantage plans may give you. So if you're eligible for Medicare, call us right now because you may be eligible to enroll in a plan with amazing additional benefits. Some Medicare Advantage plans may pay for services like these. Dental visits, vision coverage, hearing coverage, home delivery of drugs, even gym memberships. Some plans may include no co-pays for many services and zero deductibles. Don't wait to find out if you're eligible to enroll in a plan that may include some of these wonderful benefits you deserve. Call us right now. The call is free, the information is free, and there's no obligation. Make this free call now to learn if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that may include additional benefits you want. Call us right now. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Two years ago, Alabama made a smart decision to invest in infrastructure and fix our broken old roads and bridges. But we're still awfully stingy about who gets to drive on them. Nearly 170,000 Alabama drivers have lost their licenses because they missed payments on tickets. Support the bipartisan driver's license bill and get Alabamians back on the road. Workers drive Alabama. When we're free to drive, we're free to work. Welcome back to Alabama Politics. This week I am Dale Jackson. Thank you very much uh, for being here. We'll get to the parting shot here in a second and talk about that situation. Uh, down in Tuscaloosa, but let me remind you first, head on over to yellowhammernews.com. Sign up for the seven things you should be talking about uh, today. You'll get an email from me every single day. How exciting. Uh, yellowhammernews.com. Sign up for that email blast today. Uh, but for right now, let's head on over to the party shot. My party shot this week is directed at everybody that thinks Brandon Miller has been exonerated because he was not charged in this terrible situation. Uh, in Tuscaloosa involving two Alabama basketball players, three of them actually. Uh, and it's a, a very sad situation uh, all the way around. But the DA comes out and says there's nothing we can charge him with, and we're treating that like it's an exoneration uh, when it's not. He delivered that gun to the men, uh, the man who turned around and gave it to another person uh, who ended up shooting somebody. And he said there was a confrontation coming. Miller knew that when he brought the gun in. At least the text messages show that as of right now. Look, uh, here's the reality. Uh, he may not have committed a crime. Uh, he may not be guilty uh, of anything. Uh, but what he did was still wrong. And, and I think that's pretty obvious. And, and I will just point something out. We take basketball players and football players and all these other things, and often they do things off the field that may not be criminal, but we still sit them down and say, you can't do this. You've got to be better than this. You're representing the university. This is one of those situations where that probably should happen. I understand number two in the nation. He's their best player. I got all that stuff. I get it completely. Uh, but uh, giving him a pass on stuff like this is a bad idea. And remember, sometimes punishment isn't only about the individual you're punishing. If you sit this guy for a couple games, bring in some people to talk to him about why he shouldn't do things like this and why he's got to be better, that doesn't only help him. It also helps other people who find themselves in these situations as well make the right decisions. That's worth noting here. Uh, hopefully this kid goes on and has a, a wonderful career and a pro contract and makes a bunch of money because he's going to get sued probably uh, for what went down here and he's going to need it. So it's just very important to do the right thing. Do not deliver a gun to a friend at 2 o'clock in the morning. That is a bad idea uh, all the way around. Don't do that. Just don't. But do come back next week. We'll be here. Alabama Politics this week. Thank you very much for being here. Talk to you soon.